How to Make History Dates Stick by Mark Twain. Some of my favorite days are these kind of days, the days where I get a package of an old book. <sighs> Priority mail, baby. <laughs> I love these, oh boy. Whoa, I can work out with this. One, two. This is a book that has some Mark Twain writing in it. Oh my God. You know Mark Twain, he wrote Huckleberry Finn. He got so interested in memory training after he took a memory course by a guy named Professor Louisette. Yes! <laughs> In here is an article that Mark Twain wrote on memory. There it is! Oh baby, chapter one! Harper's Monthly Magazine, December 1914. How to Make History Dates Stick by Mark Twain. This is going to be awesome. Written and illustrated, see the cartoons there? By Mark Twain on how to memorize. Look at these illustrations that he's got. I'm gonna read this and then tell you what I learned. I'll give you a copy of this article for free. All you have to do is click, click the link in the description and and I will give you a copy of this article written by Mark Twain for free. Winterland, tell me all your secrets. Fill me in on your wildest moments. Uh, let me read this to you. 16 years ago, when my children were little creatures, the governess was trying to hammer some primer histories into their heads. I guess the governess was his wife. His kids were trying to learn some history dates. His kids had to memorize the order of the kings of England, but they found it really hard to do. So he came up with a memory system, and this is really unique. It's a spin on the mind palace technique, which we talk about a lot on this channel. If you don't know what the mind palace technique is, there's a link down in the description. He talks about how he lived out on a farm, out in the country. So let's go for a drive and do this out on a country road. So this is what he did. He wanted to teach his kids how to memorize history dates from 1066, William the Conqueror, all of the kings and queens of England. There was 817 years up until that point. So starting on his front porch, on his farm, he mapped out 817 feet. The first one was William the Conqueror in 1066. So he had a vase on his front porch and he imagined William the Conqueror on that vase. That was the starting point. And then 21 years later, William Rufus became the King of England. So they marked, since it was 21 years later, since William the Conqueror lasted 21 years, they marked off 21 feet and they put a stake in the ground. I'll show you what I mean. Then it says right here, he drove a stake in the ground, a white stake, about three feet high, just like that one there. On the stake, he wrote the names of the king or queen and the years that they served. And he placed them however many feet apart they were years apart. So the first one, 21 feet, William Rufus right there. And he wrote William Rufus on that stake. On the first stake, he wrote William the Conqueror, and then he counted off 21 feet because it was 21 years. And on the next stake, he wrote William Rufus. Then he counted off 13 feet because he reigned for 13 years. And he wrote the name of Henry on it. Then he counted off 35 feet because Henry served 35 years and drove Stephen's stake. Then he counted off 19 feet then he staked out 37 feet and then 17 for Henry and Richard and John. So every foot was one year. And this was helpful because if you saw a long distance in between the stakes, in your mind, him and his kids would already know, oh, that person served for a long time. 
and if there was a short distance between the stakes, that automatically told his brain, oh, that king or queen only served for a short time. Why do I have an apple in my hand? Him and his kids would make it a game. He would throw the apple as far as he could, and wherever it landed, the first kid who could say all the history facts of that stake, that area where it landed, would get the apple. Now, that sounds kind of crazy. It almost sounds like he's treating them like dogs. Then boom, wherever that landed, the kid would have to say what history facts were in that area where he landed it. Kind of a fun game for kids. Maybe not. That doesn't sound too much fun. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> this is going to sound really weird, but I don't like heights, so I'm going to sit right here on my balcony. I'm, I'm clinging to the, to the door. Uh, so I don't live in the country. I live in the city. Oh my God, I'm so nervous up this high on my balcony. I, I, I don't ever come out here. I got to get inside. I'm sorry, that's weird, I know. I gotta work on my phobias. Okay, so I hope you see the genius of this method. Mark Twain was teaching his kids how to think in pictures and to map out the reign of the kings and the queens by dates, by sections. Once they knew the order and the sections and the years, because they would know that, for example, Edward II was from the years 1307 to the years 1327. Once they knew the king or the queen and the years that they served, he then did something that was really cool, I thought. Listen to this. He would take other historical events that happened during that reign, and he would imagine them in the field in between the stake. So let's say that this stake represented 1732, and this stake was 1755. I'm just making these dates up. These represented the dates. He would imagine the things that happened around the world in between those two. For example, Example. He would imagine the Declaration of Independence, Shakespeare, Napoleon, Joan of Arc, the French Revolution, Wellington, Waterloo, Plassey, Cowpen, the Battle of Boyne, the invention of logarithm, the microscope, the steam engine, the telegraph, anything and everything all over the world. We dumped it all in the pegs according to its date, regardless of its nationality. So what he's saying is, is once he had this mapped out, and this is what today we, we can use as a mind palace. We, most people don't do it outside, but you could certainly do it outside. The only difference is, is that he was driving stakes in the ground, those white stakes, and those became his marker. I live downtown. So if I wanted, I could make that building a peg, that building a peg, as he calls, that building a peg, that one, that one. And then I could walk around the town and see, the, imagine the kings and queens on each building as I walk around a town. And now here's the apple. I'm just kidding, I didn't throw it. Click the link down below and you can download this article by Mark Twain on memory. But this was a great lesson uh, from Mark Twain on how to use locations along a route, along a road, as memory pegs to remember stuff like history dates. Then once he had the locations memorized, then he would imagine more stuff in between those stakes in the ground because those stakes in the ground represented years. What he talked about was a variation of the mind palace or the memory palace. If you don't know what what that is there's a link in the description there's a link in the description for my memory course I have a, a, a long memory course called black belt memory but also if you want you can download this article that was written by Mark Twain click the link down below and I will send you this article written by Mark Twain for free it's in the description if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you like old memory books give me a thumbs up comment down below uh, if you thought this was a good idea tell me your memory techniques I, I appreciate all the comments I love interacting with you guys that way.